99% of the time when I'm sending out a cold email to work for an artist, my subject line follows this format. Artist name at venue or festival name slash slash the date or dates of the event if you don't know what day the artist is playing yet. And a real life successful subject line example is the following. Res at contact festival slash slash December 28th, 2019. Rez's name is in all caps because that's how her name is stylized. If you're ever unsure, just check the artist's Facebook page. It's an added touch that's necessary to grab a manager's attention. I also never structure the date as 12 28 19. I'll always type out the name of the month in full, December 28th, 2019. This subject line method makes the manager's life a lot easier as they never have to wonder what artist this is for and when and where the show is taking place. That said, you don't have to follow this exact method but as long as your subject line answers the who, where, and when at just a glance, you should be good to go. Now for the body of the email. Line breaks are key here. Nobody's going to read an entire paragraph. That said, let's start with line number one. Hey, name of manager if you have it, or hey there if you don't. I've never once said anything like dear whomever it may concern or something like that. There's no reason to complicate it. You can also replace hey with hi, but I think that sounds weird, but that might just be me. We'll stick with hey there as a placeholder. Now for line number two. This is another line that will need to be changed depending on the day of the week you send out the email. If you're sending out an email on a Sunday or Monday, you can say, I hope you had a good weekend. Any other day of the week, you can keep it simple and say, I hope you're doing well, or I hope you're having a good week so far. We'll act like it's a Sunday evening and hope they had a good weekend. Now for line number three. This is exactly what I say. Tarek here, based out of Portland, Oregon. No need to say my last name. No need to add any other additional information. It says my name and where I'm based in one short seven word word sentence. This line is also important as it implies possible travel if the show isn't local. Moving on to line number four. This is where you mention your services and then reiterate the who and where. I wanted to reach out in case you're still in need of photo and video services for a craze at Beyond Wonderland at the Gorge on June 18th, 2022. If you only do photo or video and not both, just say photo services or video services respectively. And if you don't know the exact date the artist is performing, like at a festival that's five months out for example, you can say this June instead of on June 18th, 2022. Now for line number five, and this one has two versions, one that mentions the rate and one that doesn't. As always, I will provide top of the line content with a fast turnaround time for your team. You can end line number five there, or you can add your rate at the end of it like this. My all in rate is, and then you can put whatever your rate is. If you struggle with figuring out rates, I actually have a video dedicated to rates that you can watch after this video. I'll link it in the description below. But anyways, line number five asserts confidence by saying as always, always, you exert experience. You're saying, this isn't my first rodeo. I know what I'm doing. The next part, I will provide top of the line content with a fast turnaround time for your team, provides reassurance to the manager that they're about to receive some bangers by hiring you, and they won't have to wait long either. It is then ultimately up to you if you would like to add your rate at the end of line number five or not. I've had success with both methods, but there are pros and cons to both. The manager could see your rate and could completely ignore your email. And on the flip side, you could just be adding an additional step because 90% of the time you don't include your rate in your email, the manager's reply will say something like, what's your rate? Moving along to lines six through eight, and this could differ for you if you only shoot photo or video and not both, but I will then say, feel free to visit the below links for more information. And then directly below that, I will have two custom links, one titled photo portfolio that leads to my website's live music photography page, and another link that says video examples that leads to a Dropbox folder of only my best edited raw clips. Make sure that only the best of the best of your content is behind these links, because I am imagine that it takes managers seconds before they decide if it's a rejection or not. It's basically your resume. Now you could be on a different line number than I am at this point. And if you're new to my channel, this will be new. But if you've watched other videos on this topic before, this will be a refresher. But for line number nine, and this is a pivotal one, you will say, lastly, attaches my certificate of insurance for your convenience. And then obviously attach your COI to the email. I title mine COI and then the year. Adding your COI to the email shows that you're taking this seriously, and you'll stand out from all the rest if they see that you're locked and loaded and ready to work. Now, last but not least, for line number 10, close out with a looking forward to your response. Thank you. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the exact cold email template that I use for over 90% of my concert photo and video outreach. Sometimes one word or one line will change depending on the situation, but all of the emails will exert professionalism, confidence, reliability, and convenience.
And you'll maintain that while going back and forth on an email chain with a manager, while also being as concise as possible. I personally think that the easier you make the manager's job, the higher the chance you're going to get hired. Thank you for watching, liking, and subscribing, guys. I hope this cold email breakdown was valuable to you. That all said, there is still something we didn't go over. What if the festival you're reaching out about isn't local? How would you go about requesting airfare and lodging? Well, I got a quick one-minute lesson on the screen now that explains what to do. I'll see you there.